His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Safiya Palace. The meeting discussed local topics aiming at advancing the comprehensive development process in the kingdom. His Majesty praised His Royal Highness's role in serving the kingdom and consolidating its global leadership and competitiveness in all fields, hailing His Royal Highness's diligent efforts to develop government work, advance various development sectors, and adopt initiatives and strateg strategies to achieve more gains that benefit the nation and its citizens. His Majesty commended the various vital projects that are being implemented in the kingdom in various sectors. His Majesty commended the continuous progress in various BDF units thanks to their provision with the latest military systems and adoption of the best methods of practical and theoretical training. He added that its, uh, its affiliates have always proved their high competence and braver, bravery in various tasks assigned to them and have always been worthy of trust and appreciation. His Majesty expressed pride in the honorable international achievements of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, citing His Highness's winning the title of the Mombazier Endurance Championship in France and the first participation abroad of the children of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and His Highness Sheikh Khalid in the endurance race in France, as well as the Royal Endurance Team's winning first place in the World Junior and Youth Championships at the team level in France. On the occasion of the new academic year, His Majesty the King expressed his sincere wishes for success to all students and universities and public and private schools and institutes, appreciating the national efforts of administrative and educational cadres at the Ministry of Education and all educational institutions. The meeting was attended by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi. The Global Water, Energy and Climate Change Congress was inaugurated with the participation of 130 speakers from 30 countries to review the challenges and opportunities available for investing in water sustainability. More on this report. In order to formulate policies that support the preservation of natural resources and through the implementation of a number of environmental initiatives and programs, it was necessary to combine international efforts represented by the holding of the First World Conference on Water, Energy and Climate Change, which places as its top priority the presentation and discussion of plans aimed at reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Carbon is a major priority on the agenda of countries around the world. The First World Conference on Water, Energy and Climate Change is an opportunity for participants from various industrial and environmental fields to discuss challenges and opportunities and learn about the best global and modern technologies in order to invest in water sustainability and the preservation of natural resources. On the sidelines of the conference, a number of pressing issues related to enabling policies for sustainable management of water and energy and climate change were discussed, in addition to discussing the solutions proposed for sustainability and the role of society in water and energy security. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, participated in the 160th session of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level, headed by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation, and Moroccans Abroad, Nasser Breda. The meeting discussed the topics on the agenda and the report submitted by the Arab League Secretariat General on strengthening Arab cooperation in political, economic, social, security, financial, and administrative fields. The minister discussed a number of political issues including the Palestinian cause, Arab affairs and national security, international political affairs, social affairs and human rights, Arab national security, terrorism combating and the relevant Arab system among other issues. Dr. Zayani also participated in the meeting of the Quartet Arab Ministerial Committee concerned with following up on Iranian interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries with, which was chaired by Saudi Arabia and the meeting of the Quartet Arab Ministerial Committee concerned with Turkish interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries, which is chaired by Egypt. The meeting of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level issued a number of decisions on Arab action and advancing the process of cooperation towards further interconnection and integration. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif al Rashid Zayani, participated in the follow up meeting of the implementation of the decisions of the Arab League in the presence of representatives of Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Libya, and the Secretary General of the Arab League. 
The committee reviewed the report prepared by the League's General Sec Secretariat regarding the political and diplomatic steps it took to implement the decisions issued by the Arab League Council meeting at the leaders and ministerial levels and approved the decision that will be presented to the Arab League Council meeting at the ministerial level. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met the High Commissioner of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, Felipe Lazarani, on the sidelines of the meeting of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level in its 160th session. They discussed the efforts undertaken by the agency to provide support and assistance to Palestinian refugees, providing them with necessary services in various educational, health and social fields, and the projects implemented by the agency in the field of comprehensive humanitarian care to provide a safe and sustainable environment for refugees. They also discussed the importance of the international community's support for the important humanitarian role played by the agency and the support of the projects and programs it implements to alleviate the suffering of Palestinian refugees provide them with the necessary care and meet their requirements and needs and for peace and security to prevail in the Middle East region in a way that preserves the rights of its peoples to security, stability, development and decent living. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, yesterday participated in the meeting of the third session of the Arab-Japanese political dialogue, which was held in Cairo, headed by the Egyptian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Samah Shikri, and in the presence of Arab Foreign Affairs Ministers, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Japan, Yoshima Sahayashi, and with the participation of the Arab League Secretary General, Ahmed Abul Ghaib. The minister delivered a speech in which he expressed his happiness at participating in this meeting, which is a testimony to the strong ties and shared commitments between the Arab and Asian regions. He stressed the nece necessity to confront the pressing challenges facing the countries by forging a deeper understanding and exploring ways of joint cooperation. He added that the meeting represents a unique opportunity to exchange ideas and engage in an open and constructive dialogue on issues of common interest. He called for realizing the potential that lies in the Arab-Japanese partnership to open new opportunities for growth and development. They discussed joint cooperation between Arab countries and Japan, ways to develop historical friendship relations and achieving mutual understanding and coordination between the two sides on regional and international issues of common interest. At the conclusion of the meeting, a joint statement was issued in which the two sides expressed their satisfaction with the current state of Arab-Japanese cooperation and their aspiration to strengthen joint cooperation including the cultural, educational, environmental and energy fields and to hold the next session in Japan next year. The minister stressed the need to establish a culture of human solidarity as a pillar of maintaining international peace and security. They also stressed the need for joint action to confront various international challenges, including combating terrorism, achieving sustainable development, energy security and food security. The ministers reviewed recent international developments and stressed the importance of maintaining international peace, security and stability and their commitment to promoting peaceful resolution for disputes in accordance with the UN Charter and the principles of the international law. The ministers also stressed the importance of concerted regional and international efforts to find political solutions to regional issues in accordance with UN resolutions and relevant agreements. Students in the Kingdom of Bahrain enjoy the support and care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who always affirms that the children of Bahrain and schools and universities are the pillars of the future. More on this report. The care and support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the educational process is evident through his royal speeches, and he is always keen to support and motivate the students of the kingdom. The prosperous era of His Majesty the King witnessed an educational renaissance that was reflected in Bahraini education outcomes. His Majesty's recent speech was a beacon of motivation and achievement in the service of the country to achieve the best educational outcomes that keep pace with developments in the labor market to prepare students scientifically, ethically, and enhance their national belonging. Students in the Kingdom of Bahrain enjoy royal support in order to achieve their national goals of success and excellence and to raise the name of Bahrain internationally. The speech of His Majesty the King confirmed His Majesty's support and motivation to all students out of his confidence that the people of Bahrain are the ones who will contribute to the advancement of the kingdom locally, regionally and internationally. 
The new academic year began with about 155,000 students attending classes in 209 government schools amid a festive atmosphere and welcoming them and guiding them to their classes as a result of the early preparations carried out by the Ministry of Education in all its relevant sectors. The ministry has prepared all the necessary means and capabilities to accommodate all students to ensure a successful return to school. With the start of this academic year, a new schedule will be implemented related to school time for all stages, as the end of school hours for primary stage will be at 12.30, while the middle stage will be at 1.15, and the secondary stage will be at 1.45 p.m. As part of the preparations for the new academic year, the Ministry of Works announced the implementation of a number of projects with the aim of providing a safe environment for students, preserving their safety and road users, and improving the current conditions of the streets to avoid traffic congestions that occur with the return to school. The Ministry indicated that it completed maintenance work for 19 public schools and has been handed over to the Ministry of Education in preparation for the new academic year. It added that maintenance of 21 public schools is underway and 14 public tenders have been issues to carry out maintenance work in 27 public schools within the agreed-upon plan. With the start of the new academic year, the relevant security directorates at the Ministry of Interior in coordination with the Ministry of Education have taken the necessary measures to ensure a safe return to schools. More on this report. Within the framework of the keenness of the concerned directorates of the Ministry of Interior for a safe start to the new academic year, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education, all security and organizational measures have been taken to enhance the safety of students in all schools. The General Directorate for Traffic has taken a series of executive measures that regulate traffic movement in school surroundings. In this context, the Community Service Police plays an effective role in maintaining the security and safety of students and organizing traffic. Training courses organized by the Ministry of Education in cooperation with the Ministry of Interior were held, which had a great impact in activating the role of guards and improving their performance and providing a safe environment in schools and all educational facilities. The safety of students is a priority that the concerned authorities are working to achieve, which requires the cooperation of parents and guardians. The Ministry of Education launched a preparation program for first grade students on the first day of the new academic year 2023-2024 with the aim of facilitating the integration of children into school life. The program includes a set of activities aimed at introducing first grade students to their teachers, classmates, the classroom environment, school facilities and the services provided to them in addition to practicing a group of various sports games. The program also allows students to practice drawing and coloring to express their feelings on their first day of school. The Ministry of Social Development affirmed the readiness of the administrative and educational staff in academic and vocational rehabilitation homes and centers to receive 182 students with disabilities during the new academic year. The Academic and Vocational Rehabilitation Center will provide many rehabilitation, educational and vocational services for children and youth with special needs through the Academic and Vocational Rehabilitation Units. This year, the Academic and Vocational Rehabilitation Centers are implementing the first phase of curricula for the Academic and Vocational Rehabilitation Programs, which have been prepared and designed as educational packages appropriate to the type and severity of the student's disability to provide qualitative, efficient and effective educational rehabilitation programs. In conjunction with the beginning of the new academic year, the Consumer Protec Protection Directorate at the Ministry of Industry and Commerce launched the We Are Here campaign, which aims to raise awareness on the rights and duties of consumers in accordance with the Consumer Protection Law, and to educate them and the principle of smart and sustainable consumption, which consists of allocating the family budget in advance and searching for, choosing, and comparing goods before purchase.
The history of municipal work in the Kingdom of Bahrain goes back about 100 years, during which it witnessed great developments that contributed to activating its role in serving the comprehensive development process in the Kingdom. More on this report. With the aim of organizing the daily life affairs of the people of the Kingdom of Bahrain, the municipality was established in July 1919. The municipality of Manama is considered one of the first municipalities to be established in the Arab world. The municipalities began their work by numbering houses and shops, and then became responsible for some construction works. In 1920, the formation of the municipal council began, as the first electoral experience in the country. A number of presidents and members elected by the people and appointed by the government succeeded in assuming the presidency of the municipal council, which decided to adopt the principle of elections in forming the council, and in which women also had a share in casting their votes. In December 1962, His Greatness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa kindly opened the municipality building, which remains to this day a witness to the process of municipal work in the kingdom. With the issuance of the municipality's law promulgated by Decree Law No. 35 of 2001 and its executive regulations, the tasks and powers of the municipal council member were determined to be focused on managing and developing public services and facilities of a local nature and providing main services such as proposing the construction and improvement of roads, setting related regulations, and beautifying and cleaning streets and public places. Since the holding of the first municipal elections in the region in 1924, and its 99-year history, municipal councils have played an essential role in providing the best services, programs, and projects to the individual and society. They also form a link between citizens, residents, and the executive bodies in the kingdom to achieve common goals that are in the interest of the citizen and the nation. The activities of the Technology Forum were launched under the slogan Enabling a Sustainable Future for Water and Energy with the participation of a number of experts and specialists in the same field, which was organized by the Ministry of Oil and Environment. More on this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain hosted the Technology Forum on the sidelines of the first World Conference on Water, Energy and Climate Change with the participation of groups of companies and specialists in the same field. During its sessions, the forum focused on a number of policy-enabling topics for the sustainable management of water and energy, in addition to exchanging experiences, especially pioneering ideas in the field of water resources development. The Technology Forum is one of the scientific platforms and important gatherings to discuss mechanisms for investing in water sustainability and preserving natural resources, in which many local Gulf and international companies participated by presenting the best practices and modern technologies, thus making the Kingdom of Bahrain a major headquarters for knowledge. The Technology Forum focused on addressing challenges and opportunities to find appropriate solutions in the field of water, energy and climate change to invest in water sustainability and the preservation of natural resources.